My Govanen. Welcome to Tolkien Lore Channel. I'm the Tolkien Geek, and you may have noticed I have a new background. This is my new permanent studio. It's not totally done yet. I still have to hang up some cool Middle Earth stuff in the background, but I'm still in the process of moving, so just haven't got around to that yet. So things will improve. This is not a permanent situation. This is just the permanent room. So with that said, the point of this video is to discuss all of the stories that Tolkien wrote that are fictional stories and rank them from least favorite to favorite in terms of my personal preference. So let's take a look and get going. At the bottom of my list is a little story called Mr. Bliss. And it's not that it's a horrible story, it's just it's kind of a children's story and it's written as a you know, it's just kind of a, it's a story about Tolkien not being a good driver, is what it is. Uh, it's very short, you can get it illustrated uh, in a nice little edition, and it's just basically about Mr. Bliss who goes and buys a car and then has really interesting adventures because of his poor driving and other things. It's a kid's story. And it's not very long, and it's not very complicated, and it's just there's just not much to it. So that's why it's at the bottom of the list. Next on the list, and substantially more interesting, is Rover Random. And I've done a review of this, and you can find that on my channel. I'll link to it in the description below. Rover Random is another children's story, but it's much longer and more developed. Rover Random discusses the story of a dog who gets changed into a toy dog who then finds his way into one of Tolkien's son's pockets, although he's not named in the story, uh, and then is lost and the, has a bunch of different adventures. The reason this story was written was to console his son after he lost a toy dog at the beach, and so that was the genesis of the story, but it's interesting because it touches on some of his larger mythology because there's a brief sight of elven home not the best story ever but it is an interesting read especially if you have kids next up and once again more interesting although I would need to know more to really get the most out of it is Farmer Giles of Ham Farmer Giles of Ham is very comedic which is not typical of Tolkien style as we think tend to think of it uh, but it's also comedic in ways that I don't fully understand because apparently there's lots of puns based on places in England and philology and just all kinds of stuff that I am not well, I don't have enough knowledge to really figure out. It's still a fun comedic story even if you don't get any of that and the humor is quite interesting and that's why it beats out the other two so far. By the way, at this point, I should mention, I am not counting the Father Christmas letters. They are kind of a story, but I'm not counting it for purposes of this video because it's not one coherent story. They're, they start off kind of disconnected and random and then kind of develop into a little bit more of a story later on. So it's just not a single story that Tolkien wrote, so it's not. I'm not counting it for this video, which is why you're not going to hear it, but if the... If I had, it would have already been mentioned anyway. After Farmer Giles of Ham comes Leaf by Niggle. This is one that is the closest thing that Tolkien ever wrote to just strict allegory. And it's not the strictest of allegories, although to say that it's not allegory I think would be stretching it. Leaf is pretty clearly Tolkien, or not Leaf, Niggle is pretty clearly Tolkien, various other people and other things or have real world references it's pretty allegorical it has meaning beyond the strict allegory and that's why I think you could get away with saying it's not the strict effect, strictest of allegories but it's allegorical meaning is kind of what makes the story interesting anyway and it's autobiographical elements are another thing that make it interesting so that is part of why it makes it this far on the list, although the fact that it is allegorical is what keeps it from getting much higher. Similarly autobiographical, but much less allegorical, is Smith of Wooten Major. Now this is where we start getting into the really good stories. Smith of Wooten Major is just a really fascinating little story, and I don't think I'll ever know enough to get everything there is out of it. 
which is interesting because it's much shorter than the Lord of the Rings, and yet I feel like there's so much more to it that I just can't really dig deep enough to get to. Maybe if I read it a hundred times, I might get more out of it, and if I knew more about Tolkien and his life, I might get more out of it, but I'm probably never going to get there. But nevertheless, it's a very interesting story about a smith, or a smith's son who grows up to be a smith, who gets to go to the realm of fairy and has lots of interesting adventures, and there is so much poignancy to a lot of the things that go on in this story and that happen to the main character. And this is another one I think I've done a, a video on before. Any of the stuff that I have done videos on before... I will link in the description below. I'm not necessarily going to remember to mention all of them, so just check the description below generally if you want to know more about some of these that I've done reviews of. After Smith of Wooten Major, I find The Hobbit the next best, or not, well, the next one up. The Hobbit is, of course, we're getting into the longer stories now, and The Hobbit is well known to probably everybody watching this channel, but The Hobbit is just a really good story. It's It's a it's written for children, and Smith of Wooten Major really isn't. But The Hobbit is, and yet it, it's a much more engaging story because it's much longer. We get more character development. We have more time with the people. You know, there's just a lot more to The Hobbit than Smith of Wooten Major, even though Smith of Wooten Major has a really powerful draw. It's just really kind of too short to be quite as good as The Hobbit, even though The Hobbit is a little bit more on the level of a children's story. It's still a very interesting children's story, and even grown-ups should be able to find it interesting, and I still enjoy reading it. So, there you go. My next one is The Baron and Luthien Story, and here I should explain, I am not including The Silmarillion as one of the stories either, because The Silmarillion is really a collection of stories, and strictly speaking, it just doesn't, doesn't really work. So, Unfortunately, the somewhere between The Hobbit and The Bear and, Lu and Luthien story, I would probably put Eärendil's story, except the Eärendil story is kind of half and half a story about Tuor and Eärendil, and it's really kind of hard to put the two together, so I'm kind of skipping over that one. But getting really high up on the list is The Bear and Luthien story, and here... The Baron and Luthien story is really good because it has a lot of really great elements. You've got the love story, you've got the adventure, you've got all this great stuff. The main reason it doesn't fall higher on the list is because so much of it seems so kind of straight tropish. And because of that, it just doesn't seem to have quite as much of the depth and nuance. And I think that's partially because Tolkien was writing you know, basically a love story that was a tropish love story. And it's because he felt his own love story is a tropish love story. And that's not to denigrate it. I mean, it's still a really great story. It just doesn't feel quite as deep and nuanced as a lot of, you know, the other stories. And in that sense, it's just falls a little bit short of the, the next ones on the list. So next comes The Lord of the Rings, which is only my second highest on this list. Lord of the Rings, of course, is just an epic, sprawling adventure story with so many things going on and so many lessons that we can take from it. It's just a very powerful story on very many levels. And one of these days, I may try to do a video on exactly why it is that the Lord of the Rings is such a powerful story, but I'm not totally sure I've grasped all of that yet, so I'm not sure I'm ready for that video. Uh, nevertheless, there is so much there that is a definite huge draw. I mean, you've got various characters, various motivations, all the crazy stuff that goes with a giant war-based adventure, and it's just, you know, it's the granddaddy of modern fantasy fiction. It just is, and it's just, it's just awesome. Number one on my list, however, and beating out The Lord of the Rings, oddly enough, is The Children of Hurin. And specifically here, I am talking about the published version that is the Tale of the Children of Hurin that Christopher Tolkien put out years after the Silmarillion. The version in the Silmarillion is great, but the one that he published on its own, and which you can get an audiobook version of by Christopher Lee, which is beautiful, by the way, is just 
an amazing story. Now, how much of this is because I have read it recently and, you know, heard Christopher Lee re read it recently? It's hard to say. Favorites are always kind of moving around in order. But at least at the current time, my favorite is Turin. And part of the reason for that is because Turin's story is so complex and there are so many tensions in it the fate and free will thing the pity and hardness of Turin you know there's just so many things going on in this story that are left ambiguous in the best possible way by Tolkien in which the reader you know really has to pick out himself or herself to get an idea of like what you know, to really understand the story, you have to think about it, and there's so much to it, and the ways in which events in Turin's life parallel each other, and this, on and on and on. It's just an amazing story, and the more you listen to it, the more you see just how deep it goes. It's a really deep rabbit hole to go down, and it's just, it's just an amazing story. So that, at least for the time being, is my current favorite. And the reason it beats out The Lord of the Rings, I think, is partially because, unlike The Lord of the Rings, where you have multiple different characters that you follow, and you do have kind of a breakup of, you know, having to split your attention, so to speak, Turin's story really does, you know, the children of Hurin even, follows pretty much solely Turin. And even when you're following Morwen and Neonor, they're following Turin, and so, you know, you're always kind of following the same little strand of story, and they all become interconnected again anyway, so I think that's part of the reason why I like it better than Lord of the Rings, but also just because the crafting of it, Lord of the Rings is well crafted, don't get me wrong, but there's something a little bit more powerful about the crafting of the Turin story, probably because it's shorter, and therefore easier to manage all the parts because just like I said the parallels of different events in his life and so many different things that would be very much harder to do in the context of something as sweeping as the Lord of the Rings so in terms of all of Tolkien's stories the Turin one is the most like a typical novel anyway but it's also just really amazingly written so that's my ranked list of stories by Tolkien from least favorite to favorite. Pretty sure I got all of them, but maybe there's one I haven't read that I don't know about. So if there is, if I left out something, you know, put it in the comments. I've already mentioned why I didn't include the Father Christmas story and why I didn't really count the Arendel story. If he'd ever really finished the Arendel story, that might have been a really good one because he had ideas for adventures that Arendel would have gone on. And... That could have been really interesting based on what we do know, but sadly it just never happened. Also, the Fall of Gondolin story never quite finished in its, in its most complete form, so I'm not counting either of those because to the extent that we have either of them, they're both incomplete, and to the extent that we have complete versions, they're too short and they don't really go together very well, and I just can't justify counting either of them because they are all just kind of like part of the history so at any rate those are the reasons those aren't included but these are the ones that I included and the reasons why I rank them the way I do so if you disagree with any of this let me know what's your favorite you know mine's Turin what's yours tell me in the comments if you follow if you want to follow me on Twitter you can get some occasional Tolkien related trivia questions I'm at JRRT lore you can also of course subscribe to the channel click that bell icon for all the notifications like and share the video if you did enjoy it. Please also find me on Odyssey and Rumble if you want to find me on YouTube Alternatives. And I've also got podcast versions of these as well. And of course, you can support me over on Patreon. Until the next time, I'm the Tolkien Geek, signing out for the Tolkien Lore Channel. Namariye.